This is the all-new all-electric Fiat 500e. I've been looking forward to getting my hands on this for a while now. Okay, price and range first and foremost. This is the juicy stuff you want to know right off the bat. There are two variations of this model. This is the top spec one, which after the sconto or rebate in Italian, see I'm learning, you're looking at just over 56 grand and for that you get a really useful 320 kilometers per charge. But forget all the facts and figures, just look at it. Regardless of the angle, this thing is freaking adorable and I love it. And the inside is cool too, with all the modern creature comforts you need, like seated heats, wireless Appalachian CarPlay and androgynous auto, plus loads of storage with the PSC being an impressive 33. Oops, sorry, 34. Although you probably should treat this as a two-seater because adults will need major surgery in order to fit in the back. And the boot is not much bigger. Plus, there is no spare tire, just a tire repair kit, which is kind of odd because if you look under the boot, there is a load of dead space there and there's also no storage under the bonnet. But don't worry about all that because this is an adorable little car and it's stupidly fun to drive. Now, I'm no Fiatologist, but this is by far the smallest electric car I've ever reviewed. It is six centimeters wider, almost, and six centimeters longer than the combustion version, so you do get a little bit more room, but it is still a very, very compact car. And look at the turning circle on this thing. That is insane. <laughs> like, can I do a full U-turn right here? Look at this. That is staggering. Absolutely tiny turning circle. This thing is 3.6 meters long, which is about 22 centimeters shorter than the all-electric Mini. And by today's standards, considering how bloated even small cars are, this is a very small car. And I like really small cars. Gosh, this thing is so easy to squeeze through the gaps. Look at this. I love it already. Okay, now let's unclog the drain of statistics and reveal a torrent of pungent facts. Starting with the stuff you need to know, this is the high-end version, but there is a more affordable version. This is called the Icon. However, the pop version is a few grand cheaper, but you still get a lot of funky stuff. However, where it counts, they both have the same 42 kilowatt hour battery. They also both have the same 320 kilometers of range, and they both have the same 87 kilowatt motor. Now, to put that in perspective, comparing it to the Mini, that's a lot less power than the Mini has. This has almost 50 kilowatts less than the electric Mini, although this does have a little bit more torque. So does that mean it's a little peppier at low speed? I'm not sure, we'll find out. But overall, bang for buck, both versions of this car are loaded with gadgetry. It is a snug little car though. As you saw earlier, if you have kids, you will have to cut their legs off, but you know, they had it coming. As for the front, however, there's plenty of room. Because it's such a tall car, it's much taller than the Mini, there's still a fair amount of room. I'm five foot 10, and even the driver's seat, there's still about three or four inches above my head. However, one little complaint I already have is that there is nowhere for me to put my left foot while driving. I don't quite know what to do with it. There's no easy spot there. There's always something in the way. I just realized I've got a goofy smile on my face because I'm really enjoying driving this thing. It's just such a fun little car. When was the last time you got in a car and just smiled because it felt so good? If you get the chance to drive one of these things, do take up the offer because it is, it's just fun. I'm gonna chuck it into this little corner here. See how the little Italian tires handle? How oh, effortless. Honestly, this thing turns on a dime. <laughs> what a perfect city car. Look how perfect this is. So much room, even though there's cars parked on either side, I can just zip straight on through. Not like this big pickup truck in front of me has to slow right down. This is brilliant. I also love how logical the central display is. Everything makes sense. Now I have the IQ of a chicken nugget, but I can figure it out and I can't even spell the word cat. K. Now both versions, whether it's the top spec or the entry level, come with lots of standard features. For example, they both come with attention assist, which is basically a system that monitors your driving style. And if it thinks you're getting really tired, it will shout at you in Italian. Okay, I kind of made that part up, but it will tell you if it thinks you're getting drowsy. Now, both versions also come with a 10 and a quarter inch display in the middle here, which is touchscreen, and a seven inch instrument cluster display here in front of you, which is bright and colorful and adjustable as well. So I can change what I want to see, whether it's energy information or navigation information, trip computer, you name it, it's all there. And one last thing, both variations of the 500E also come with monogram seats, just in case you forget what car you're driving. 
all in all, you get a fair amount of features in both versions. So why would you pay more to get this top spec model? Well, first of all, you get things like this massive sunroof. You also get 17 inch wheels instead of the standard 16. Plus you get 360 degree parking sensors and you also get an auto dimming rear view mirror, which is great if it detects something super bright and white in the background, like a Ford Ranger's headlights, which always seem to be on full beam, or perhaps my thighs, it will dim the mirror automatically. And that's handy. The top spec version also gets premium eco leather, but the main reason why you should spend the extra cash, or at least why I would, is because this top spec version gets the option of a beige interior. So you get the idea, for as little as 51 grand you are buying yourself a fashion icon and as you take this to your Christchurch coffee or your Auckland Pilates, you can brag that your car emits no carbon, no emissions, no particulate matter, that is brilliant. But is it any good as a family car? Well let's see what the voice of God has to say. There are two ice, <coughs> excuse me, there are two isofix points on the rear seat which is 121 centimeters wide as well as one on the front passenger seat. The lip of the driver's seat is 69 centimeters off the ground at its highest setting and 64 at its lowest and with the rear seats down there's 106 centimeters between the seats and the boot lip. This car also has automatic door unlocking and on that note to exit the vehicle like in Tesla cars you simply press a button however there is a manual latch if you like the good old days. Now there's no tow rating on this tiny car for obvious reasons and the mechanical warranty is 5 years or 150,000 k's while the battery warranty is excellent at 8 years and unlimited kilometers so that battery is gonna last ages. Sounds good to me as does the car's 6 speaker sound system. But now let's talk charging. If you were to charge this vehicle using a granny charger that plugs into a regular wall outlet, you're looking at about 24 hours total charge time. Now I'd love to demonstrate that, but this press car doesn't come with a granny charger. In fact, I can't confirm for sure whether or not any of the first shipment will come with granny chargers as standard. Regardless though, if you're looking at buying an electric car, my advice is to get a seven kilowatt wall or garage mounted charger, such as this one, from EVNX, these things are impressive and it means that it would charge a car like this overnight. And in the garage behind me, I'm going to have a seven kilowatt charger installed shortly. It is a top of the line one. It's got all the gadgetry you could imagine. I'm gonna show the unboxing, the installation, all the features. Hit the subscribe button as not to miss it. However, if you wanna use public charging, well, let me go and show you how fast that is. The next option is this behind me. It's called DC Rapid Charging. This is one of the hundreds of DC Rapid Chargers installed all over New Zealand by ChargeNet, which means basically you can take an electric car anywhere a car can go using public rapid charging. Now, this is a 50 kilowatt unit. Now, what does that mean? How fast can this car charge? Let's go have a look. As you can see, it's gonna take about 40 minutes to get from 20% to 80% full using a 50 kilowatt rapid charger. And that's a typical amount when you're on a road trip. However, there is a much, much faster method I'll get to in a second. But first, let me tell you briefly about the electricity that is flowing into this very car right now. All of ChargeNet's rapid chargers use Ecotricity electricity. Now, Ecotricity is an electricity provider, but it's climate positive. Yes, it's the only certified climate positive power company. Imagine that, an electricity company that's not just carbon zero, it's actually climate positive. That means if you're joining Ecotricity, you're basically turning back the clock on climate change and all the electricity they provide is really affordable because it's all renewable. Seriously, there are no downsides to signing up to Ecotricity. I'm a tightwad and I use them. You can't get a better endorsement than that. Head to ecotricity.co.nz, chuck your address in, see how much money and carbon you can save. Honestly, once you go to Ecotricity, you won't want to go back. But now, that faster charging option, and it's called Hyper Rapid Charging. And this is the faster option. This is called DC Hyper Rapid Charging. This box behind me can deliver 300 kilowatts watts of power and it can charge three cars at once and there's two of them. Question is how fast does the Fiat 500e charge? Well let's plug it in and find out. Using the hyper rapid chargers the 500e takes only 24 minutes to charge to 80% but now let's look at some more features and see how it handles the highways. I'm on my way to find some twisty fun country roads and this gives me a chance to talk about gadgets and efficiency. Now one gadget I haven't yet mentioned is that this car uses its cameras to read the speed signs as they go past and it will alert you if it thinks you should change your cruise control speed. And that's good, it reacts to speed signs. 
Most humans don't even do that. This vehicle also has driving modes. So for example, I'm in normal mode right now, which means if I take my foot off the accelerator, the regenerative braking is very, very mild. However, I do have full power at my disposal, Whee! which is kind of fun. If I drop this little toggle switch down one, it goes into range mode. Whoa, already you can feel the regen braking is really, really strong. You can effectively drive one pedal driving, just driving, braking, using the accelerator alone. But if I go one step further, and drop it down into Sherpa mode, my regen is super strong as before, my power is reduced somewhat, and I'm limited to 80 kilometers an hour. So yes, if you keep your speed down and don't use the heater too much and keep it in Sherpa mode and drive slowly, then sure, you'll get 320 Ks per charge. But at what cost? This car is fun. It's supposed to be driven properly. I did actually check the forecast to see if the weather was going to improve over the next few days. I thought maybe I'll just leave the filming for a couple of days. But then I looked at the forecast. <laughs> But enough about the weather and gadgets, let's check the 0 to 100 time and see how it handles the corners. There is no launch control in this car however, so in performance cars that have launch control you would press the brake and the accelerator at the same time and the dashboard would start flashing, but if I do it in this car, yeah it just takes a screenshot. Okay, 0 to 100 time, official time is 9 seconds, I've got the road to myself, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so it's not going to win any speed records in this machine. It's probably better suited to the city. The Mini definitely has the upper hand in terms of 0 to 100 time. That being said, what's it like in the corners? Well, here is my secondary top secret driving road. Let's give it a go. Good lord, what an interesting little thing this is to drive. I've got to say, I don't know if it's the combination of the relatively wide tyres for a car of this size, or perhaps the height, or perhaps the very, very short wheelbase. But this thing is a very lively, twitchy little car. On the country roads, it's incredibly responsive. Also, it has very, very light power steering, which means that you've got to be careful. This electric version does weigh more than 400 kilograms more than the combustion version. So yes, it's nowhere near as destructive for you, your lungs and the planet, but it is a little bit wobbly when you get over some undulating terrain. Oh, good lord! <laughs> what a fascinating little car! Whee! I think I am putting it out of its comfort zone a little bit. This is a fun, funky little city car that's great for parking in small side streets. And here I am throwing it into corners in the countryside. Uh, that was fun, but I guess I probably should act my age, not drive like I'm 17 again. It may be more of a city car than a highway cruiser, but overall, I really enjoyed the Fiat 500 electric. Yeah, you get the idea. I love this little car. I mean, what's there not to like? It's the most adorable thing on the road right now. It's got those cute little headlight eyebrow things, and it's got fins on the side. And while a lot of car makers, when they make an electric car, they don't quite know what to do with the grill. Sometimes it looks out of place, not with this car. The grill just fits the car perfectly, everything's in proportion. Overall, it's just a really funky little city car. Plus, it's fun to drive. Even though it's not the most powerful car out there, it's really fun to drive. Question is though, would I choose this over the Mini Electric, which is another great little city car that I reviewed. I'll put a link to that review in the description under this video. It's worth checking out. I liked that car because it was great for the city. It had similarly small dimensions. However, this, although it doesn't have as much power, much less power than the Mini Electric, in fact, I'm kind of drawn towards this one because it's just more fun, it's more adorable, it's even easier to park in the city. That turning circle is ridiculous, it's, it's fantastic. But when it comes to fast cars or fun cars, and this is a fun car, forget how much cheaper or more expensive one is, go with what makes you feel best. Because cars are largely emotional purchases, especially when they're fast or fun. And in the case of the Fiat 500e, this is a lot of fun.